What if I told you with zero experience that you can make this minimal vector design in Illustrator? If you guys are watching this video right now and you have no experience in Adobe Illustrator, by the end of this video, you are going to be able to make this design right here. I hope you guys enjoy the video. Let's get it. Once you open up Adobe Illustrator, the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is create a new document. This document can honestly be any size because we're working with vector, guys. What that means is we can resize our designs no matter what they are to any size, scale them to any size, and they will not lose quality because it is vector. It's not pixel-based like Photoshop. With that being said, you can make a really small document and scale that graphic up later on, no problem at all, and it's gonna help your computer run much smoother. So all you do to create a new document is go all the way up to File New, and then once you go to that, you're just gonna go to the right and go to inches, and you can make this one inch by one inch if you want to, but I have mine set to five inches by five inches, and we are in CMYK color mode. You can change that to RGB if you're just displaying your art online, that's fine. I usually like to work in RGB, but in Illustrator, I just keep it at CMYK. The raster effects, you do wanna make sure that is at 300 PPI, and everything else you keep the same, and you just hit create, and that is gonna make you a new document. The very first thing I like to do is create something called a color palette so I know exactly which colors I'm going to use in my artwork. In order to do that, we're gonna use Adobe Color Themes. It's built into Illustrator, it's amazing. If you don't have the latest version of Illustrator, you might not see this, so I recommend you get the latest version. If you don't see Adobe Color Themes, this is what it looks like, and you can go up to Window and just make sure Color Themes is checked. And then from here, we can go to the Explore tab, and what this is going to allow us to do is type in a theme that we're going for. So we're gonna go for mountains, okay? So I'm gonna type in mountains and see what kind of colors we can come up with. So I'm just gonna scroll through here and kind of figure out which ones I like the most and stop at one I like. I really like this one. So I'm gonna click on these little dots right here. It's three little dots and I'm gonna go to add to swatches, okay? So again, I wanna click the three little dots, add to swatches, and if I go up to my swatches now, you can see that it is added. Next, let's set a roller down so we actually have some sort of guide to help us create our shapes a little bit easier. If you don't see rollers, all you have to do is press Command-R on your keyboard if you're using a Mac, or Control-R on a uh, Windows-based device. So Command-R is on Mac, so I'm gonna press that real quick. Once you enable those rollers, all you have to do is create a horizontal one and put it a little bit further down than halfway. So about right here is fine, and you're gonna see this like, cyan color, right? And that's, it's actually kind of purple when you select it, but it's more of a cyan color when it's not selected. So just know if you do select the ruler, it does turn to this like deep purplish blue, okay? But anyway, I have my ruler and that is perfect. Now what I wanna do is use that to create my first shape, which is going to be the mountains of our design today. Super simple to do with the pen tool. So we're gonna hit P on our keyboard, whether you're on a Mac or a PC, P will go to the pen tool. We're gonna use this tool to create the mountains. And guess what, we have our swatches opened up already, so we can select our first color, which is this brown color, and I think this is going to be a great color for the mountains. So we're just gonna start making some mountains here. I don't know how many times I'm gonna say that, probably a million by the time this video's done, but we're gonna create some mountains. So I just wanna select once right here, once right here, and again, we're just gonna do this for both shapes. So we're gonna do this, and we're gonna make a taller one, just like this. And we don't want them to be too far apart and then we're gonna finish the shape off and close it off. And if we press A on our keyboard, we can select individual points on this and just move it around. Really cool, guys, and it's just such an easy way to work. I also think it's a little too wide, so we're gonna shorten this up a little bit. Now we have the mountains, but I wanna use a pencil once again to create additional shapes over the mountains to create a highlight on the mountain. It's just gonna give it a little bit more depth. So in order to do that, I'm gonna hit P on my keyboard again. That's gonna go to my pen tool. So now I have a shape that kind of looks like this. If I zoom in, you can see what I did here. And I am following where this mountain would go in front of the other mountain on the left here. And I do need to select that foreground color once again and make that a little bit lighter. Hit OK, and that is gonna change that color. But as you can see, it's a little off right here on the bottom. So I do need to use um, the direct selection tool and just kind of move it up so it follows a straight line. If you do end up deleting an anchor point on an accident, just press Command Z or Control Z on a PC to undo that action. That's all you have to do. So anyway, let's go and create another shape here. And this one, we're gonna go all the way down to the bottom just like this. So now we have two shapes. And as you can see, if we zoom out, we do have this 3D look. And I will mention that I don't like how dark this brown color is. So I actually do wanna lighten everything up. So I'm gonna select that and just lighten that up first. And now we're gonna go to the shadows and do the same thing. We're gonna lighten those even more. 
So we have a little bit lighter colors going on here. Now I'm gonna show you guys how to create the trees, but we're gonna use a different tool this time to get a perfect triangle. So if you go down to the star tool here under shapes, my shapes are right here on the top. You just wanna find the square basically, click on that menu, go all the way down to star tool. Once you select the star tool, all you have to do is click anywhere on the canvas and it's gonna pop up the star menu here. And this menu is going to allow you to create a triangle. So all you have to do is go to points and make that one so you wanna select one and then hit okay and that creates a perfect triangle. That is all you have to do. And now I'm going to use the bounding box to transform it and make it skinnier. So we're just gonna make it skinnier. You can also use the width and height adjustments up here if you wanted to, completely up to you how you do it. So now we have our tree, but I don't like that our color palette doesn't have a green tone. So we're actually going to create one real quick. So I'm just gonna select my color palette, move this up to the green tones, and we're gonna select something like this. I think that looks pretty nice, but I think it might be a little too dark. So we're gonna go a little bit lighter. This looks pretty cool, we might change that. But now we have one triangle that represents one tree. And then using our ruler, we just wanna take that tree and drag it in place. We don't have enough trees, right? So we need to duplicate the shape that we just created. And in order to do that, all you have to do is press Option on a Mac or Alt on a PC, and you just click and drag and let go, and it's gonna create a duplicate copy. And we want some variation with these trees. We don't want them to be perfect. So we're gonna make some shorter, some taller, vice versa, so we can create that look. We're gonna make this one a little bit taller, just like that, maybe this one a little bit shorter. Now we're gonna send some of these to the back, so we're gonna duplicate this one once. We're gonna change the color to a darker tone of that color. We're gonna send this tree to the back so we have some more depth in our design. In order to do that, you just go up to Object and you want to go to Arrange and you wanna to go to Send to Back, just like that. And it's gonna be in the back now and that is all you have to do. And we're gonna duplicate this a few times so we have variation here. Now it looks like we have more depth in our design. We're ready to move on and add the sun. The sun is really easy to add. All you have to do is go to your shapes once again. You're gonna go to your ellipse tool. You can also press L on your keyboard to go to this. I'm gonna hold in shift though because I wanna drag out a perfect circle and kinda put it like right here. And what we need to do is send it to the back again. The sun is not the right color so we just need to go to our color palette once again and select a different color. And from here we can really mess with the tones, right? Like I don't really like this tone so what I wanna do is make it more red. It's okay if you adjust the colors on your own. You don't have to follow the color palette directly. It's just kind of a guide, right? So I do often change colors quite a bit. I think the red I selected looks a little better for this particular design so we're gonna use this red and then what we're gonna do is just copy it so command C or control C and then shift command V or shift control V to paste in place what I'm gonna do is hold in shift and option and resize this one all the way to the middle and this is gonna be our red color here and then the outside one we're gonna make it slightly lighter okay and we're gonna create some sort of gradient is what we're doing by holding in shift and option or shift and all on a PC you're actually going to resize something centered to wherever it was originally if that makes sense so since it was right here it's gonna keep it in place and I'm just gonna keep duplicating this a bunch of times same exact process over and over again what it should look like and you can adjust the size of each circle shape if you want to but I think this looks pretty good since we already have these circles we can actually duplicate one of these circles and make the clouds now so in order to make the clouds all you have to do is duplicate a bunch of them and just create different sizes we're gonna cut the bottom off anyway so just kind of do what I'm doing here and you don't want them to be too far apart either here's the trick with this okay we need to create a rectangle and basically cut this in half so we're gonna create a rectangle over this and we can make this a different color what we're gonna do is select the circles first go to Pathfinder and we're gonna merge everything together we're gonna unite it as soon as you unite all the circles you can select everything now including the rectangle and we can literally just use uh, minus front and this is going to delete it from the front and now we have a perfect cloud and we can make this a really light gray color so I'm just gonna go back to my foreground color make this a gray color you can make some of these white and put it in front of objects just to give it that appearance that it's in front just like this and then this one could be much smaller. Two tips I have for the clouds, don't add too many of them guys and make them different sizes because what's gonna happen is it's gonna create variation and it's gonna be less predictable if that makes sense. This looks pretty good so now we wanna take one of these circles from the center sun again and just duplicate it once again and we're gonna use this for the bird. So what we're doing is we're crossing two circles, it's gonna create an eye shape in the center and we're gonna duplicate both of these together and drag them down to where we kind of see this bird shape happening, right? And if I change this color to white, you can see exactly what it's doing. So now if I actually merge these top layers together, unite them, 
and we could do minus front again, you could see in a second that we created this bird shape. So now we have a bird. And now we can drag this anywhere we want and make them different sizes. We can also make them wider, not as wide. Another thing is if you create different sized birds, it's also going to help make your design more believable and create more depth as well. And keep in mind guys, you can change the vibe of this by just changing the color. So if you don't like the color that I chose today, go to the Adobe color themes, choose a different color and change all the colors accordingly and you can create any look you want. But that is it for this one guys. If you wanna see more Adobe Illustrator videos, let me know in the comment section below and don't forget to smash that like button. That's how I know that you love my videos. And if you guys are new here, thank you so much for subscribing. My name is Charlie Pangus. Guys, keep creating, keep being awesome. I'll catch all of you in the next video.